So what good are model experiments? We want big ships. Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. Model experiments only help us if we can match those measurements to equivalent values at the full ship scale. Well that's easier said than done. It turns out we had to develop a whole new field of fluid mechanics just to answer this one challenge. And that's actually where the science of modern ship design began, answering the question of how to reliably convert from model scale to ship scale. Let's find out. The issues around model scaling arise because we need to scale two different forces. You see, ship resistance develops from two major forces, the viscous forces and waves. Now, viscous forces are basically skin friction plus some flow interactions at the stern of a ship. The second category of forces comes from waves generated by the ship. But here's the catch. These two forces behave very differently. The columns on your screen summarize the major differences, and I'm going to refer to some terms that I explain later on in this video, but for now it's important to understand that these are entirely different forces with entirely different rule books to work with. Different math, different physics, and different formulas to convert them from model scale to ship scale. So before I can answer the question of how we handle scaling up those two different forces, I have to first introduce you to one of the major tools that we use for experimental scaling, and that is non-dimensional numbers. Non-dimensional numbers are more than just a tool for scaling. They're also a tool for understanding. We don't want to just scale something up blindly. We're also seeking to answer the question of why. We want an understanding, discernible patterns, predictable behaviors so that we can do better with each iteration and each attempt. And that is why naval architects usually examine resistance using the tool of non-dimensional coefficients. Non-dimensional coefficients are math formulas that are used to reformat experimental data. They can take the raw force of resistance and factor out ship size and speed. Also important is that this works at both model scale and ship scale. Remember that, we're going to come back to it later. But for the moment, let's stick to why would you even want to do this? Well, reformatting the raw data into these coefficients helps us clarify patterns, and it allows us to make meaningful comparisons between different ships, because we've now factored out the size and the speed component. For an example, look at the figure on your screen. Right now, it plots raw resistance forces for a typical ship. Now, looking at this graph, it's difficult to identify significant patterns. Now, look at the graph again. This time, it's plotting the same forces but reformatted as resistance coefficients. We're using non-dimensional numbers. The patterns are much easier to identify now, and they're better segmented. Look at the blue line of the wave coefficient. It very clearly shows three distinct regions. First, we've got this rising slope from zero to one meter per second, and then we've got this region from one to two and a half meters per second, where you've got this interesting oscillating pattern going on. And then we have a region where the slope rapidly increases to a new plateau, going from two and a half to four and a half meters per second. That's the power of resistance coefficients, easier pattern recognition and easier analysis for comparison between different designs. Now let's come back to the idea of how we use these resistance coefficients to convert from model scale to ship scale. You see, resistance coefficients also work for the same ship, at different scales. Under the right speed conditions, we can use resistance coefficients to scale up the results following a pretty simple process. Step one, record your experimental forces at model scale. Step two, convert your model scale forces into resistance coefficients, which is now factoring out your model size and your speed. Step three, apply the size and speed of your full scale ship to convert that resistance coefficient back into the actual full-scale results. There's your answer. Unfortunately, the process is far more complicated. 
You see, I said that simple resistance coefficients work under the correct speed conditions. Well, here's the catch. Physics makes it impossible to find the correct speed, thanks to something that we call the scaling correlation problem. Remember that I said that our resistance coefficients only work for the correct speed conditions. 14 knots at ship scale is not 14 knots at model scale. It's actually slower. And there are formulas that we can use to match the model speed to the ship speed. And these formulas are more non-dimensional coefficients. So let's talk about those. Well, resistance coefficients worked for forces, so let's keep going with a good idea. We also have non-dimensional coefficients for speed. These speed coefficients depend on the ratios of the dominant fluid physics that are in play, and we use different formulas for different situations. For example, a submerged submarine would use the Reynolds number as a coefficient for speed. The Reynolds number focuses on the ratio between the momentum of the water and its viscosity. Uh, the actual math is a little more complicated than just taking a simple ratio, but we're focusing on concepts here. The fathers of fluid dynamics derived several different coefficients based upon different combinations of dominant forces. William Froude is another big name. He was famous for the Froude number, which centered around the relation between Earth's gravity and the momentum of water. The Froude number is particularly important because we use it to characterize waves, like the waves coming off of your ship. So getting back to the question, how does all of this tie into the scaling correlation problem? You see, to convert from model scale to ship scale, you need to basically match the speed coefficient at both scales. This ensures the correct balance between the dominant forces at both scales, and allows you to correctly apply your force coefficients. And that's the crux of the scaling correlation problem. Remember how I said that ship resistance was dominated by two major forces? Yeah, that's going to be a problem because we've got waves and viscous resistance. That correlates to two different speed coefficients, the Froude number and the Reynolds number. Uh-oh. Two different formulas that work in opposite directions. Take a look at the graph on your screen. That compares these two coefficients for different model scale factors. So we're trying out different combinations of what we would pick for a model size at a single model speed. Now, if you're really keen, you'll notice that in theory, we could achieve the correct speed for perfect scaling correlation at the point where these two lines intersect, and that would be the model scale we pick. That theory, though, has some severe practical limitations. First, that intersection point changes depending on the speed that you're picking. So to achieve perfect correlation, we're going to need to construct a different model for each speed that we want to test. And uh, ship models are not cheap. And on the list of infeasible things, another one would be artificial gravity. Yes, artificial gravity is what you're going to need to achieve the graph shown on your screen. You see, I did a little bit of a trick to create the graph on your screen. I assumed that the gravity changed between model scale and ship scale. Now, mathematically, this is perfectly valid. Practically, though, gravity stays approximately the same everywhere on planet Earth, at ship scale or model scale. So unless you can invent cheap artificial gravity, the scaling correlation problem is impossible to solve. And sidebar, if you have invented cheap artificial gravity, why are you focusing on ship model scales instead of getting your Nobel Prize? Well, that's a bummer. <laughs> If we can't solve the scaling correlation problem, we need to get around it. The International Towing Tank Conference, we just call them the ITTC for short, they developed a procedure to subtract out the viscous coefficients. So now we only have to deal with one set of forces at a time. Now the scaling procedure goes roughly like this. Step one, record your experimental forces from your model scale. Step two, Convert your model scale forces into resistance coefficients by factoring out the model size and speed. Step three, subtract the viscous coefficient using the ITTC correlation line at model scale. Step four, recalculate the ITTC correlation line 
at ship scale to estimate your viscous coefficient at ship scale. Step five, add back in that estimated viscous coefficient at your ship scale. And step six, apply the size and speed of your full scale ship to convert back into full scale results for resistance and power for your full scale ship. And if you thought that was complicated, actually the full ITTC scaling procedure is still more complicated. But this video is focusing only on the major concepts of this procedure. The ITTC correlation line. This was the key to solving the scaling correlation problem. The idea for the correlation line started with William Froude, way, way back when. He started by towing flat plates down a tank to discover a simple formula for estimating the viscous coefficient. The key word there is estimating. Now, over the years, we've improved on the work of William Froude to develop a formula that very closely estimates an actual resistance coefficient. So we don't need an experimental measurement for it necessarily. The key behind that ITTC correlation line is the uniform application. Now, this formula provides a very good estimate of the viscous coefficient, but it's still an estimate. It's not perfect. Thankfully, though, that doesn't matter. You see, every towing tank in the world uses the same formula. Every tank starts from that same baseline procedure, and then they add on their own small safety factors to correct for these tiny imperfections, plus some other complications of scaling that I haven't covered in this video. And this works specifically because every tank uses that same baseline procedure as their starting point and any additional corrections are small. We'll allow variations from one tank to the next if they're small variations. We can believe that, because we still have the ability to compare from one to the next now. Go to any decent tank in the world, and you will get nearly the same process. Sadly, physics made it impossible for us to create a perfect formula to scale our model test results up to the ship scale. But we found a way around that problem. The beauty of the ITTC correlation line was recognizing practical engineering. See, we don't need to be perfect, just close and consistent. Add on a small safety margin, and you have a reliable method to convert from model scale to ship scale. Thanks very much. I am Nick, the Naval Architect. Can you do a video on swaths? Yes, I can. Can you do a video on towing tanks? Yes, I can. Yes, I do custom requests. You can hire me as a professional engineer to meet the needs of your project. Check out my website to see the host of engineering services I provide, along with a range of other helpful articles and other useful tips. And be sure to subscribe for more videos.